What's up guys, this is Mike with Shallow Reefing, coming back at you with another video, and today I just went over all my Fauna Marin products on the last video. Not very many people want to tune in for like a 25 minute video, so I want to break down one of the products that I really kind of need to dive a little bit deeper into, and that is Coral Balance. Now if you watched the last video, you know that Coral Balance is supposed to be dosed every four days, and I was dosing it only once a week because if you do it every four days well your days that you dose kind of change but i'm not really using it as the product is intended so we're going to give this product a good shakedown and actually follow the directions this time now what this product claims to do is that it's going to regulate and stabilize the natural nutrient cycles and acid regulation and it's going to accelerate phosphate breakdown and stabilizes it at a low level and as you know I always have high phosphates in my tank. My nitrates are always great, but my phosphates kind of creep up over time. So what I'm going to do to kind of measure everything is take a look at my phosphate level and my nitrate level, see where they're at, and see after two weeks of dosing this, this should be about four doses of the, you know, coral balance. So if after four doses and two weeks, it should kind of see a trend or see a change in the phosphate level after that time. So in order to give this product a fair shake, what I'm gonna do is a water change today on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I'm going to test all my levels. And then I'm going to do two scoops on Sunday after the water change. And then on Thursday, two scoops. Then on Monday, two scoops. And then on Friday, two scoops. Finally, on that Saturday, I'm going to be testing my levels to see a change. So 24 hours, we didn't see a change. Hopefully after two weeks and actually following the directions, we'll see a change. So let's jump into this. You don't care about me talking. Let's just do this water change and then dump this stuff in. You can kind of pause and see what I'm gonna be doing for my schedule. And when I've been making all my salt water, I've been going off the HANA because I keep recalibrating the HANA and it's starting to lose calibration every other week and my refractometer, I just recalibrated it again and it's dead on 35 when I have the refractometer solution. So I have no idea what to believe and how did they, were, why were they on and then now why are they off within the same day and I've been doing all the maintenance on the HANA and the HANA is driving me nuts. But long story short, it's been three years. I don't trust this thing as far as I can throw it anymore. I can throw this thing pretty far. Um, I'm kind of done with HANA, I'm gonna get a new salinity meter. I'm going to get two new ones, the Milwaukee, and then I'm going to get a uh, one of those floating hydrometers and then call it a day. That will have three reliable measurements and this thing's garbage. So I'm about to do all this testing and I don't even know how accurate it's going to be because the salinity's off, everything's off slightly, but whatever. I don't think it's going to affect the nutrients in the tank that much. Let's just get this freaking thing done. I don't want to keep wasting my time on this. All right, so I'm guessing that this is a little bit closer to the refractometer than it is to the HANA because I'm at 8.6, 4, 10, and 13.80. And previously when it was on, my numbers were running much higher, especially for my magnesium. So not, you know, something to keep an eye on. But what I really want to look at is 12.6 for my nitrate and 0.09 for my phosphate. Finally was able to get my phosphate below 0.1 finally, but that's because I've also been using, um, you know, phosphate E from Brightwell to get it down. Now, let's see what's gonna happen with the nutrient levels and let there be cloudiness. All right. I will be back in two weeks and I will test everything and let you guys know what has happened. All right, so my two week experiment actually using this uh, coral balance correctly has come to an end. Let's see what the results are. Well, started off two weeks ago at 8.6, 4, 10, 1380, 12.6, and 0.09 using um, Brightwell Phosphate to drop it down because it was kind of high as you can see. It was like 0.17 all the way up here. Um, now, because I haven't done a water change because I want to see what I would do, my levels, actually my, you know, calcium, I need to kind of dose more calcium. I'm at 16 and 0.2 phosphate. Mmm. So does coral balance do anything? 
Mike from the future editing this video while watching football. So I have a clip from Reef Bum and he actually asked my question to Claude Schumacher. So let's see what they responded with. Question from Shallow Reefing. I may be late to this, but can you explain the Coral Balance product in detail? How do we know it works? The Coral Balance is a very simple thing is um, product who adsorb, um, who make all the phosphate, um, take them out in organic phosphate, which is skimmable. And at the same time, it adsorbs uh, color bodies and bring it also to the skimmer. Then it turns some nitrogen levels back to urea and give it then to the corals as food. So that's like uh, we had some years ago, we had some products like uh, coral snow, Yep. or fine um, fine carbonates or um, zeolite powder to clean the water. And this is the development then as, a, as one to clean the water and the other side to provide some food and for the corals and for the bacteria. Gotcha. So it takes out phosphate in the form of organic phosphate and makes it skimmable and it changes nitrogen to urea, which is easier for the corals to uptake. So wouldn't my nitrogen level be a little bit lower and wouldn't my phosphate level be a little bit lower if it's doing that? Granted, I did just dose it the night before and then I'm getting that, but you would think like about 24 hours it should have skimmed out a bunch of stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's doing something and feeding the corals because if you convert nitrogen to urea, it might be doing something, but I, my data is not really showing that. And Claude, let me know if I've kind of messed this up, but that's just kind of what my data is showing. Um, maybe you guys have other data that it does different things, but that's just what I got. Well, one thing I can't deny is that ever since I started doing this Fonamarin, you know, program that I've been on, this hammer has not really, actually Frog's Bond has not really grown much. Ever since I started using this Fonamarin and doing their method, it has now come all the way over and started stinging all my digi here and this digi has been there for years and this hammer has not really taken off and all of a sudden it is taken off and as you know my mushrooms that guy's new right there they are just going everywhere so one of the other claims of the coral bounce is the acidity of the water would be stabilized and i've been looking at my graphs and there's no sense of me doing a screenshot and showing you guys it but it's all exactly the same it still follows the same rhythm I'm not really seeing much of a difference in pH at all. But I'm definitely looking to get my hands on some more Fonamarin products just to try them out because I'm pretty impressed out of all those products. The only one I'm not really super impressed with is this one. But who knows, if I did the same study and just didn't dose coral bounce at all, I wonder what my nitrate and phosphate would be at. Not quite sure. And now it's time for a water change. So guys. That is all I got for you this time. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, click the subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment below. Let me know how you like the video. And as always, I will see you next time.